Welcome back students and in this video I'm going to talk about how to compute zonal statistics uh, on Google Earth Engine. Basically zonal statistics is one of the most uh, you often used uh, GIS operations that are applied for special data and is usually um, is used to derive statistical parameters or statistical values for uh, per different special areas. This is a very common uh, procedure. You can easily implement it um, in QGIS, in ArcGIS, and now we are going to learn how to do it in Google Earth Engine. So we are still working uh, with the same uh, Landsat and NDVI collect, uh, Landsat collection and NDVI composite that we have um, produced with you in the previous videos. Well, but this time I have moved our area to a uh, British Columbia in Canada uh, just uh, to demonstrate you the power of uh, Google Earth Engine and that we can apply it for any region. So you remember if you want to change your study area you just have to click on the point and you can move it around and dr drag and drop to any other area in the world you are interested in and to rerun this code to that area. All right, so basically, if you don't remember how to declare and import Landsat collection and filter it, as well as how to calculate NDVI, I refer you to the previous videos. Well, and also here, the, the final step is computing maximum NDVI. So here we are producing a variable max NDVI. Now what we have to do uh, is to create basically a region for which we would like to collect zonal statistics. Let me run this uh, code that you can see it better what I mean. So basically uh, um, we define a buffer around our point which is a circle which is basically a circle and it's a polygon feature. It's, it's, a, it's a vector vector feature, yeah? And how we do it, we uh, declare variable region, we use geometry buffer function, and uh, the buffer is, uh, uh, in my case, I use it for 200 kilometers. Uh, so you have to uh, divide it by 100. Okay, uh, so the output of this is, um, uh, variable region uh, which uh, is a buffer zone um, around our uh, point of interest. In this uh, step here we are uh, creating um, 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 a raster data, a raster file which we will use as a um, input for our zonal statistic calculation. We are creating it based on our uh, region variable region and what we uh, and based on the elevation data that we have uh, created and basically what we uh, uh, say here is that first of all we create an empty image and we update the values of this image so we assign the values for this uh, uh, for um, uh, we assign the values in this image based on the ele elevation uh, within this um, uh, pixel. So basically what we say, if elevation greater than 200, assign uh, the value of 200. If the elevation is greater of 400, assign 400. And if uh, greater than 600, 600. So we will have different zones, yeah? Based on the evaluation and uh, um, based on our region polygon file that we have created. What else? We also here we you see you can you probably noticed we have a, a mask. We create a mask. We will where we also say uh, basically we are only interested in the areas which are not equal to zero. Why we are doing it? Because um, elevation of zero means water. It's a, a level of the sea. So in here an ik means not equal to zero yeah so we update our uh, zone variable with a um, uh, with this function to mask out all the um, areas which are water and finally we clip um, this new newly created image to our region because we don't need it to the whole world and if you want to see basically how it looks like you can also print it yeah and uh, in console then you can see what basically uh, the output of um, our uh, 
uh, analysis. This is going to be a one band image with uh, um, values from zero to 600. Yeah. So always, if you're not sure whether you did something correctly or not, what it helps is to print it in the console and map it uh, in your map uh, window. All right, now we are basically adding all our layers uh, to um, to the map. So now we have uh, elevation zones, region and maximum in DVI. And we sent our map on our geometry. Yeah, so basically this here, the last one says that we should concentrate uh, on this area of uh, British Columbia that we are interested in. And uh, here, basically, this piece of code is uh, uh, the piece of code that um, basically um, deals with um, with uh, creating um, zonal statistics, calculating of zonal statistics. So we are declaring a new variable, which is statistics. And what we are essentially saying here, please uh, stack a newly created zone image to have a maximum and DVI image and then reduce it by region. We use reduce region function to calculate zonal statistics. And here this is a dictionary, but because the output of our um, what we are aiming at is basically for values for each of our zone. And we uh, use a reduce a mean function and we group it uh, based on our zones defined here. We say geometry is our region and we have to specify scale. Scale, we, as we are working with so special resolution, since we are working with Lancet Composite, it's 30 meters. So you remember that basically in Google Earth Engine, whatever we run, uh, we uh, basically we run all the uh, analysis on the scale that we are looking at. Yeah, so basically if, I, if I'm continuing zooming and you can see that the whole functions are running on the scale I'm looking at. So um, the composites in, in Google Earth Engine do not have scale. So it is important to uh, specify what scale you are working with that uh, basically the output file when you uh, the, the output uh, either its image or statistics or would, would be computed on the scale that makes sense. Yeah, that's important. Well, and uh, yeah, so the tricky part in this function here, what is important and maybe not very easy is uh, this one grouping, grouping uh, um, um, step. So what essentially it says, uh, group uh, our layer based on the layer one. So the and layer one in our uh, two band image, we have to, as a part of this step, we produce a two band image. We um, add uh, to maximum and DVI image, which is one band image, a band, which is uh, another band, which is, which is zone. So the output will be two band image. And um, we, what we say, please um, compute mean based on the zones provided in the zones and this is file, the second band in our file. That's important and tricky <laughs> to understand and important to understand and um, because uh, sometimes we can, well, we could have a Landsat image, Landsat 8 image, which has 11 bands and then if you stack your zones at the end, you have to write here um, basically 11, not 1, because your zone um, file which we which based on which you want to group your um, your bands in Landsat on the 10 Landsat bands would be the, the last one yeah the question is if you don't remember um, how where, which band you need to use then uh, my advice to you you can always basically create a variable so I here I declare the variable stat1 and I basically I just use this part of the uh, of the function, and I run it. Um, and oh, you you can also print it immediately. And you see that we have um, our output is a two image, 
uh, two band image and it has two bands band zero is in dvi and band one is a constant so our zonal layer so basically um, this could be a way for you if you don't remember this correctly you could um, always do this function in two steps you can first uh, stack in dvi to uh, basically uh, with the zones to create a two band image and then run uh, the uh, zonal statistics separately this is also possible for you or if you just forgot about it you can always uh, create a variable and print it and then by looking at the results you would know uh, which band you should use and finally we print our variable stat which is this object it's uh, since it's here we define the dictionary it has a return to us also dictionary and basically it has it shows us for each of the group and you see the group has a um, it's very convenient we have three groups from 0 to 200 from 200 to 400 400 to 600 and more so we can see the uh, mean values of NDVI.